Hi, it's Dave from Driving Venture and I'm back in the RS. So yes, welcome back to the GT3, the RS, the Ren Sport, the car that puts a big smile on my face. Let's get the IP exhaust on. Ooh, the downshifts. You feel it right through your seat, the vibration. Those IP manifolds. I think I'm waking up a few people in Lancashire this morning. Now I've just come off the M6. It's the Carnforth turning because I wanted to take a leisurely drive on the A6 towards Kendall. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this car because we have just gone through, yes, yeah, 6,067 6, miles. I want to talk a little bit about how this car. has been performing through every single one of those miles because it's been smiles all the way <laughs> when you get in this car you just want to keep driving and driving and driving and you don't want to stop it's got so much performance designed and bred for the track but it's at home on the road, it is. And you know, you can take these corners and it's just so safe, it's so secure. It's just got so much poise. And that noise in the back, the howl that comes through the cabin as you're pressing on. <laughs> You'll never ever fall asleep in driving this car. My heavens, Lord. So yes, the GT3 RS is back on the track. I said I was back on the channel. I said I was going to, uh, it needs to go on a track. But yes, the GT3 RS is back on the channel. I just wanted to say a few words about Porsche Centre Kendall because it won't be too long now, later this summer. And it will be Porsche Centre South Lakes. Their new facility is well and truly underway. It's just at junction. I think it's 35, it's down to be corrected, but it's a calm for the junction, it's just right there. It's gonna be a fantastic uh, sensor. So many people are gonna see it as a driving north and south. You know, you've gotta consider these people because family owned dealership, they've been going 60 years. It, what it must mean to What it must mean to the current owners to have seen, you know, the people that have gone before them build the sensor, set the sensor up, um, take on the Porsche brand, and it's been going ever since. And it's a great testament to the Parker family that they've kept the business um, true to its roots. Just a great, great people. So if you're in the market for a Porsche, you're thinking about buying a Porsche, and you're in the Northwest, I mean, you can come from anywhere in the country, but certainly, um, I would certainly give them a call and go and see them. The other thing I want to talk today about is also why I enjoy the Porsche brand so much. I think it's because it's got such a history, a little bit like the Porsche Centre Kendall uh, business, you know. It's been going a long time, Porsche been making cars a long time. As we know the story, road's a bit bumpy. Ferdinand Porsche, you know, he couldn't find the car he wanted, so he made his own one. And the 911, what a success story. I never thought I'd actually get to, to own a car like this. I never, never believed it. When I got my first 911, I felt like, wow, this is such a good car. And later on today, I'm gonna to be driving the latest 911, a 992 Carrera. So stay tuned for that. 
one of the reasons I enjoy the 911 so much is because it's a car just got that classic design that classic shape it's the shape you know it's gonna be rear engine you know it's gonna have that uh, lovely swooping rear unless you put a nice wing on the back it's just a classic classic car and as I said in my last video my last Costco drives video it's a car which ages well and you get into a 911 you know in the years ahead your money's safe or you get you know the dip off after it's purchased a bit and then if you buy it the right time they will come back that's why I like that's why I like Porsche so much there's such a history associated with them the Le Mans you know how many times they won the Le Mans you know I remember watching it when they won it in that 919 hybrid before they before they gave up incredible car incredible car from last to first and won it amazing okay we are gonna have a little bit of a talk today about watches again yes because I'm wearing today my Rolex double one triple six zero this is the heavy duty piece this is the the boss dive watch this is the deep sea the rolex deep sea sea dweller that came out i think it was about 2008 and i first tried on this model reference when i was in hong kong and at the time i thought oh, it's just too big it's just i don't know i'd gone from wearing you know the sea dweller 4000 and then putting this on my wrist it was a big step up in size but rolex as they always tend to do you know they steal the march on the competition they bought out a really big watch when watches were getting bigger and bigger and bigger so this watch is 44 millimeters uh, in diameter so it's a chunky thing you know you know it's on i was in uh, a rolex store in italy and they said they really sell a lot of these in the winter, sorry, in the summer months because it's short sleeves, it's t-shirts, it's polo tops and the watch really stands out, you know, in the winter months maybe you've got a cuff over it or a jacket, you don't see it as much, but in the summer months these really sell and it's a standout piece because it is so big, um, other than the Yachtmaster 2, which I mentioned before, it's not really my thing, but this, uh, this is the watch which my dealer at Whittles had had there and the initial flurry of sales had gone through and everyone wanted them. The lists weren't quite so bad then, you know. Um, and then they called me up and said, we've got one in the stock and what do you think? And he ummed and ahhed and I thought, go on, go on, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. And I actually bought it, uh, went into the store on the way up to a to an appointment up in Cumbria. I popped into Preston on the way and uh, bought it. And I, I've been really, I've been really happy with it. It's just... It's a watch which it does grow on you the more you wear it and the more you have it. Um, and the dial, it's uh, it's like a it's like a matte black. So again, it looks a little bit grey, and then it can look very jet black in certain lights because of the, uh, the way they've designed it. Is that when the light hits it, it's easy it's easier to read it. It's got a dome glass. Obviously, we'll get into a bit more detail on the watch. I get stationary but it's got a dome crystal on the top the crystals thick this watch 12,800 feet this goes down 3,900 meters this watch will take some punishment <laughs> it really really will I've had it so long it has been serviced so it has had its uh, had a service about three four years ago and as is the way with Rolex, when they come back, they are so crisp. They are just, they're like, they come back in like a box, like a service box. It's like buying a new watch again. They really know what, what they're doing. But there's so much metal on this watch. The case is, 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 is a Jumbotron <laughs> case. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about the, the newer Deep Sea and the James Cameron. I've mentioned it before, but this was a watch. This particular reference was the watch that James Cameron wore uh, when he went down in that uh, green submarine, the one where the colour green appears on the dial of the deep sea D blue, the James Cameron edition. And I knew there was going to be a change in this watch when they brought out the um, 43 millimeter Sea Dweller 4000, the one with the flat glass went and then they put the bubble on. And this watch, you just knew because it, they're going to have to update it because it didn't have the newer movement and it also. Overtaking is no problem in this car. It 
didn't have the newer movement and also the 43 millimeter anniversary sea dweller with the red writing on the dial that watch the bracelet was made wider so and the, and the clasp was wider as well so you just knew something was going to happen to the deep sea because it was a bigger watch but had a, had a narrower bracelet and it does it does taper we'll get on to that a bit later on in this video so i have ummed and ahed about it James Cameron I have um, you know I've been offered them in the past it's coming back into my thinking so maybe but I would like to keep this one because I've had it so long again it settles into your collection and um, it, it is the original so you know that's it the newer ones yeah they command a little bit more money in the secondary market again it's a watch you have to buy for overs it's difficult to buy them in the stores the list is so long um, the deep blue particularly is hard, is hard to get um, they don't get a lot of supply um, in my my dealer and I think it's the same up and down the land throughout the world the deep blue dial I don't know I just it'd be nice to have it just to have it as a as a watch which is, it slots into the collection as the the newest version and of course now with the Submariner 41 millimeter that bracelet becoming a bit wider I've now got a watch that if you like is chunkier but it's got a got a narrower got a uh, got a narrow bracelet on this than say a watch which is um, bigger and bigger in the um, in the width of the bracelet over a watch which really is a bigger watch let's be honest so I think it's something I'll probably end up doing let's get a load of this so fast it's just it's too much for the road <laughs> it's too much for the road the thing about this car too is that when you are driving it the faster you go the more the aero comes into comes into play so the rear wing starts to do its job the front aero on the car the low front end the low, low front splitter it just hunkers down and you're gone and the grip of the winter rubber I'm running these continental TS860 S tyres. Amazing. I mean they're not Porsche approved but they're better than the Cup 2s this time of year. As the rain comes on, as we arrive at Kendall, we're hitting the A591 again. So it's a watch that I wanted to, to, to get into eventually and it's been a super super watch again it's a watch I wear a lot um, you can throw anything at it obviously it rotates and I get them out of the you know the bank with all the other watches I have it rotates around but it's a watch I could take out and have for a week week and a half no problem two weeks sometimes um, I just love the black dial with those white plots on the dial you know the chromolite plots that, that glow that bluey green color um, you know, the big bezel on it you know the minute the minute markers on the 60 minute graduated bezel just does it just does it does it for me I don't know which brand I enjoy the most if it's this Rolex brand or or Porsche it's close when I'm driving this car it's probably Porsche So I'm just going to make a little pit stop here in this service area. The downshifts, please, come on, come on. I said on my stories on Instagram, I said, I said, oh, I uh, don't know whether to drive the E-Class tomorrow or, or drive this, because I, I knew what to do this type of a video. I would say the E-Class is a bit quieter. But this, this thing's a lot more exciting, isn't it? And you, you sort of... You know, the anticipation builds, even though, you know, I've had this car now a while, I've done 6,000 miles in it, you know, I just, the anticipation, I know I'm going to drive it, it just puts a big smile on my face, it's great, I get in it, you sit in the seat, get your hand on the steering wheel, and you're like, let's just get going, I mean, it's just, it's just fabulous. So maybe uh, I'll get the watch off the wrist now, yeah, so this is the double one triple six zero. This is the original deep sea that Rolex brought out in 2000. The first thing you notice about this watch is it's got extremely thick profile. This watch is heavy, 
heavy duty. And it's got the ever present uh, helium escape valve in the back. What sets this watch over uh, apart from the standard sea dwellers isn't just the fact it's got far more uh, water resistance. This will go down to 12,000. 900 feet. It's also the fact that it's got a different bracelet too. So, like the other Sea Dweller, the double one, double six, double O, it's got this extension link in the back here. But it's also got a different way of making the bracelet that bit bigger, and this is called the glide lock. Okay, so this lips lifts up like this and then you can just make it that little bit bigger on your wrist and so on. So that's different to the deep sea and you don't get that in, in the other sea dwellers. The other thing about uh, the deep sea is on the case back, oh you see there in the back of there, in the case back, it's titanium and the reason it's titanium is because it has to flex with the pressure. I'm not going down 3,900 meters, that's not me but it will flex with the pressure so it's not got a 904L um, steel case back which makes this watch unique uh, to, to Rolex, no other Rolex has that type of case back but it's got the, um, the platinum inlaid uh, 60 meter, 60 minute bezel which is very, uh, very very nice, it just stands out so well and the bracelet, bracelet does taper so you know I was saying before it tapers from a thicker point of where it joins the case and it, 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 it tapers down. Now that's one of the reasons I think they made the the, the, the deep, uh, the new uh, 12660 because they wanted to beef up the bracelet make it a bit wider so it kind of kept in kept in line with a bigger case and it also has a wider um, clasp at the back so they, they made this wider as well. So uh, yeah it's just a stunning stunning watch um, and I really enjoy wearing it it's a state it's, it does make a statement when you're wearing it um, I have wondered um, about selling it put towards the James Cameron never got over the line with that so there we go anyway another reason I've stopped here because I'm going to use the toilet so I'm going to use the loo come back and we'll carry on so welcome back <laughs> yes that's how I leave myself there Jesus I was absolutely you know that's thing coming up from Cheshire and up here you know it was a long journey and then you need the toilet and you get get up this way so I know all the pit stops for that. So yeah, it's it's just a super super watch. Um, you know, they, they they do go for a little bit less than retail. This particular one, the Jane Cameron ones, you know, that, that they're going to be going for overs all the time. I think the less the less readily available. But it's a watch that just just puts a smile on my face when I, when I wear it, and I really enjoy wearing it. And I don't have to worry too much, don't too precious about it, because again, it'll take some bumps, it'll take some scrapes and scratches, and actually enjoy a little bit of patina on my watch. Um, I really, really do, and I enjoy that bezel, just crisp, crisp. 120 clicks. And not many people know that in the bezel. So yeah, let's onwards. Let's get onwards to um, Porsche Sensor. Kendall. The sun's just come back again a little bit, so I'll get the shades on. We were set to review um, the 992, but we got that flat tyre. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, remember watching that. You saw that video. Land this car. It's just got so much performance. It's just got so much performance. And maybe that's something else I can talk about in this video. At the end of the day, how fast can you really go on the open road in a car? You know, no. Put not to, not to 60 in like 3.3 seconds, 200 mile an hour. I'll tell you, I've, I've driven on the autobahn and when you get to 175 miles an hour, it takes a lot of steel to keep your foot on that pedal. It 
really does. Even though I did it in my previous GT3, and it does push you into the road, the aero I was just talking about earlier, it's a very, very fast speed. So 520 horsepower plus what this IPE system on this car gives me, it's more than enough. So the new GT3 and then, you know, the GT3 RS after that, it's not ex it's not giving you more that you can realistically use, although maybe it may handle slightly better. Certainly the new 992 GT3, it's all about the top end, which is why they've redesigned the rear spoiler to give it more surface area, to give you more downforce. Well, you've got to be going really, really fast to, to really appreciate that. And of course, that's one of the reasons if they've done it is because they want to have the car be able to pick up faster when it's going fast so it's sort of like 130 to 160 to 170 speed but is that really is it really usable unless you're on the Nürburgring or a nice long straight on a track probably not so yeah it's just been a joy this car 6,000 miles of complete and utter symphony of complete and utter pleasure the smile factor the happiness factor the joy factor I mean, listen to these downshifts one of the things the car gives you when you're used to driving cars like this is the, the ability the car has to take the speed off quick so you've not just got phenomenal cornering performance but you can you can take the speed off the speedo just like that these ceramic brakes they're gonna be even bigger on the 992 they're bigger on the 992 turbo they're enormous but you know it just creates so much opportunity for pleasure being able to slow down safely and quickly and corner with the poise that this chassis this wider track rs body gives you it's just it just blows me away it just blows every time i drive this car i get out of it i think bloody hell yeah i just think Phew. Heart, get heart, takes your heart rate up, hairs on your hands, just stand on end, just completely blows you away. And I'm so glad I got one, I really am. Before all this latest emission bandwagon clamp these OPFs on cars, and of course we know they're going to be on the next one, and the next one, and how long is it going to be before they say, oh sorry, it's just too much CO2, you just can't make that car anymore, by 2030, no pure petrol cars will be for sale. Whether that can actually be achieved, I do I do wonder, I do wonder. I think to myself, is that really doable? As we know, politicians are very good at saying things, making it sound, oh yeah, great, vote for me, this is brilliant. It's a vote, it's a vote winner. I think that's why politicians have got behind the global, uh, the climate change bandwagon, because you see votes in it. That's just my opinion, I'll get too political don't really believe it's as bad as everyone's making out I'll be quite honest with you because we don't have the records we, don't, we, we can't go back to three thousand years and say what was the weather like then we don't know recent records yeah but how long's the earth been here and how many climate cycles are we going to go through we don't know so it's very unfair for me that the motorist is, is penalized with all this stuff on the cars and it takes it back to what I was saying earlier you know electrification the performance when I drove the take cam and what electrification brings to cars in terms of torque, torque that's always there, always on tap, just un unbelievable. That will just wipe the floor of a petrol engine. So we're putting more and more horsepower and power into petrol engines and turbos and all the rest of it to try and go quicker and quicker and more and more performance. Then an electric car comes along and blows it all away. I mean, a take cam turbo ice in a straight line will take this on and it beats it. It won't sound as good though. So I have arrived, yes we are now coming to the latter stages of my trip to Porsche Centre Kendall. It's 992 Carrera time, so stay tuned for that video, it will be coming out soon. If you haven't done already, just 
please subscribe to my channel. I know this, this particular type of video I do doesn't get as many views as the kind of car review stuff we do. Um, but I just like, this is an opportunity to do a bit more talking, get to know me a bit more, get to talk about watches a bit more. Um, so it's a, different, it's a different cup of tea, it's a different thing. But I want it to be real and original, you know, a lot of YouTubers just seem to have been hijacked by the brands and hijacked by pay promotion and all that. I don't know. But it's, a, it's, just, it's not the way I want to take things, to be honest with you. And don't forget, yes, the DB Club is coming, Drive Venture Club is coming, there's, there's things going on behind the scenes, can't go into too much detail, but that's going to be coming along. So I know there's other people with an appetite and passion for their car, they want to use it. You know, this is why I have a car. I have a car like this so I can use the bloody thing. I want to be out on the road. I want to be in great places, great roads, great times, great experiences. That's what it's all about for me. You know, why would you have a Porsche to do? I'll just finish off the video with this bit, yeah. Why do you have a Porsche and you never drive it? You know, a friend of mine has just acquired a Speedster. So it's done 40 miles since it was purchased. Now, you know, I don't like to, I'm not docking people, but you know, it's never been on a run, never been anywhere. These engines and these cars, they're not gonna fall apart when you get to 20 and 30 and 40,000 miles on the clock. That's not what happens to Porsche engineered flat six engine. These engines are good for some decent, decent mileage. So I would say, don't worry about it. Just, you know, Get it on the get it on the road and enjoy your car. Don't be price sensitive. Oh my car's going down in value. It doesn't matter. Your experiences with your car will outweigh the pound notes, the dollars, the value. Just just don't worry about it. So yeah, hopefully you'll think about subscribing, get the notification button on. It's 992 next. I'm here now at Porsche Sensor Kendall. Give these guys a look up if you're in the market for a Porsche. These guys have got all the cars. It's just great people. Come up here and get to know them. They'll look after you. They'll sell, hopefully sell you your next Porsche car. Thanks very much for watching. As always, guys, I'll see you next time.